ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Woodlife. What I've got some video of here is tipping into our shed. Uh, where I'm going to be tipping the first load is up in our front bays. And as you'll be able to see, it's pretty tight to get in there. And you'll actually see I get a bit frustrated because I can't see with the sun in my face looking in my mirrors back into the shed all I can see is blackness so you'll be able to actually see that here on the camera and see how dark it is looking back through the mirrors so yes I do get a bit frustrated with it and it takes me a few goes just to try and get my trailers lined up with where we wanted them Right here, you can't see it, but I'm actually getting out to clean my passenger side mirror. Usually I keep both my mirrors fairly clean, and the reason I had to get out and clean my passenger side is because even though that's blue sky up there, we had received rain that morning which made my mirrors dirty. The other thing you might be noticing is how dark it is looking back into that shed. The reason I was having issues was because I'm trying to back between two concrete walls that are not much wider than what the truck is. Uh, you'll be able to see the gap in a minute when it um, actually becomes a bit brighter in there for you to be able to see. You can now see Brenton down the back there standing beside the trailer. He's guiding me back in. I can just see him in my mirror so that way I won't um, hit him with the trailer or squashing, uh, keeping visual contact with him at all times so that I know where he is and making sure I'm not going to hurt him. You can actually see on the left hand side, to the left hand side of the trailer, you can see there is a concrete wall right there which is the bay and you can actually see the reason I can't tip right up is because there's a roof right there. We were hoping that I was going to be able to get a bit more off that trailer than what we did, but we only got a small amount, so we had to keep on. I had to keep on pulling forwards, going up, and you can see Brenton's guiding me there to move me forwards when the um, fertilizer stops running, and then to guide me so that I don't hit the roof when I'm putting the tipper up.
when this rear tipper gets up near the top I don't really have to lift it too much to get it to pitch over a fair bit so that's why you only heard me give it a slight rev I have actually made this a bit of a long video and the reason for that is to actually show you in real time what we go through as far as tipping off into our shed. We've done the best we can with placement of everything so that, that way we can get trucks in and out. Um, we can successfully get 30 metre road trains in and out as well as AB doubles through where they actually have a B trailer, a dolly and then a B double behind that. We successfully have them come through. Even though we do have that it still is quite tight for us to manoeuvre in around through here. And voila, it's on the ground. I did cut a bit of the video out of me actually raising it, mainly because I forgot I had the camera recording and I left my door open. So all you would have been looking at was the other end of the shed and not what I was actually doing. From here you'll actually see I swing hard to my left. The main reason for that is because I have that back trailer which I was concerned with it hitting the concrete blocks back behind me which wouldn't have been a good thing and I still had to turn around and get around to my right as I left the shed door you'll actually see how close it gets as I come out what you're looking at here is me swinging that back trailer around in between the two posts. The whole point of this is because I'm able to do it and with me putting that trailer back in as far as I can get it that saves the loader operators from having to push up as much as what they would if I dropped it just outside. You'll also notice I've got no one here guiding me back in with this trailer. The reason being that the guys have been watching me do this for the last two weeks at this stage and the first time they asked me if I could put it back around in the sort of position I'm getting it, they looked at it and decided it was probably better with that. that they'd just leave me to it and stay out of the way because they could see I was able to get my angle right. Now after I've reversed it into where they wanted it, they've come over. And I just remembered that I had the camera hanging on the mirror. Usually I stand outside watching the top of the trailer again uh, against the roof. This trailer here I don't have to worry so much because it doesn't reach high enough to be able to touch the roof. But the front trailer I usually stand out on the side step and watch it. I really enjoy working with these two. They're uh, quite uh, funny. The amount of stirring that goes over the radio and even face to face. They're there stirring me up about something that uh, was going on in the afternoon. They thought I was going to bite over it but they didn't get the bite they wanted. Like I said that back trailer I know for a fact it's not going to hit the roof. So at this point here I can actually pull forwards and get ready to get into position to tip my front trailer.
will actually take a second bite at this because the angle I was first at would have meant that my rear trailer would have come around at 90 degrees sooner than what I wanted it so I had to try and push it across to my right a little bit further so I could get to exactly where I wanted to be I now have Brenton guiding me standing on the back corner there through the UHF. The reason he's guiding me is, I don't know if you can see the shadow not from the trailer onto the post, but I actually have that post about a third of the way up my trailer and the drawer arms on my back trailer, the drawer arms being the bit that connects it to the front trailer, are sitting probably about I think they're about 30 centimeters from the post on the other side the back of my trailer is actually between the posts uh, facing towards the back as I start to tip up here you'll also see the tailgate flip up that enables us to be able to tip into a heap a lot better we don't have the tailgate in the way dragging the heap out then and the tailgate on this front trailer is actually quite heavy You'll notice that Wade's just walked around the front there. He's actually putting himself in line of sight with me. So when I get high enough, you'll see Brenton sing out and Wade will actually sing out as well to let me know I'm high enough, don't go any higher, otherwise I'm gonna hit the roof. I now start pulling forwards, edging forwards and I then raise the tipper a little bit further when I'm a bit further past the rafter so that way I can get the last bit out and then it's empty and time to go and get another load They say self-praise is no recommendation, but wait for it, it's coming. This was actually on the next load, 
just doing the same thing again pushing that back trailer in between the posts back into where they wanted it so that way they don't have to push up as much Yeah, sometimes it takes three or four goes, but it's better to be safe than sorry and not hit anything. Okay, so sometimes it takes five goes. It's the whole point of me trying to get the trailer right back into where they want it. Like I said, so that way they don't have to push as much up. Like I said, you can see I'm actually standing out on the side step, so I can stand there and watch how high the trailer is. The only reason I actually pulled forwards there was because I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't actually tipping the fertiliser over the top of the wall next door so I wasn't going into the next bay. That's the end of this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank our new subscribers for joining us and as always Please don't forget to like our videos and subscribe. Subscribe so you can help us grow our channel. Click on the notification bell so that you can get notifications of our new videos when they're coming out. See you in the next video.